All right, we should get this show on the road. Welcome back. Hope the breaks are proving to be quite a good opportunity for networking. Hope you're having a great time. Uh, uh, during this session, we will have a presentation by, by Momir Jakic from Telegroup, which will also bring the Q&A session after the, uh, the talk to their stand here in front of the, or in front of the Blue Room. Uh, Momir is a digital transformation consultant, so this presentation will concern digital transformation. And also, Momir is a contributor and longtime journalist for Svet Computer, uh, our uh, uh, well known IT magazine. So, Momir, please take the stage and good luck. Well, I uh, hope you hear me. Okay, so uh, this is a very strange topic for a software conference. And you're probably wondering what this is. Uh, there are people that I know here and a lot of people that I don't know here. So hopefully we'll enjoy this together. So as you can see, uh, it's a lot about the bottles and beer. But let's see through and, and check it out if it makes sense. And you'll tell me we're just around the corners here. So find us afterwards if you have any questions. So let me first start by saying that this should have been a presentation with two presenters. And I think it was the only one today, definitely only one with two presenters. But actually, uh, my co-presenter had to fly away from Serbia. Uh, that was a last minute call he had to make. So fortunately, the stage is mine and I can do it, do whatever I want, which is really, really cool. So let me tell you uh, something about me so that you know where I'm coming from. You know, when I go to conferences, and I, I see a guy coming from Google and he's like, I'm XY from Google. And you're like, OK, he's a Googler. What do I know about Google? Well, I will tell you something about myself so you know where I'm coming from and how did I get here. Anyway, uh, my name is Momir Jekic. And uh, I fell in love with computers when I was a child. I started programming when I was six. I know it doesn't sound real, but it is real. I was born into a family of, uh, of a guy who was a, a rocket engineer. So my dad is a rocket engineer. So we had a computer 8-bit ZX Spectrum in my house when I was born. So I started programming when I was six. And uh, I needed four years to write something that actually made sense. It was a game. I was 10. So I fell in love with computers. I decided I want to do everything with computers, about computers. And, uh, but I will share some of uh, the two stories uh, about where I'm coming from. I will not give you the third one, which is music, because it will take a lot of our time. And the first one is Carpe. And these are the four movies that made me. So in 1981, we had Excalibur, the sort of uh, uh, King Arthur, which is one of the best movies ever made in, in the fantasy realm. Then in 1984, it was Dune by Frank Herbert's novel. Then in 1985, it's Back to the Future. And finally, in 1989, Dead Poets Society, Captain, My Captain. And the three books that I want to uh, disclose, the first one is Master and Margarita. The second one is What Dreams May Come but Richard Madison. And the third one is When Nietzsche Wept by Irvin Yalom. So this is me, OK? Uh, in the meantime, I started working uh, with uh, a young group of uh, IT professionals in a company called Telegroup. And we are trying to build something quite new. I have a history of uh, doing things with concerning IT. I, I'm running for uh, Set Computer for 11 years. I have my own TV show that you don't see that often. It's on YouTube mostly, but also on Edu Televisia. And uh, I've uh, uh, started uh, this venture of building the digital transformation highway. Uh, I'm one of the 20 people that got the certificate for digital transformation by Germany, Austria, and Serbia. What a strange combination, huh? The last time when we had this combination, it was really good. Anyway, uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that we are all talking about digital transformation, and everything is about digital transformation. It's the newest. Uh, uh, buzzword and I want to share our view of, of, of this path because when we started this journey we realized that we need to have a, a path of our own that we cannot follow just the people that are already doing it but before we started we decided to see what uh, the best companies in the world are, are doing with this and if you ask these best companies they will tell you uh, that they are using their sector knowledge, their fin financial prowess, and everything they got. And they can offer you almost everything, a strategy, a pathway. They can even change your culture. So all the big consulting companies will tell you the same sentences. 
go to their websites, you will find the same keywords like it was written by an AI written by you. So I don't know, but this uh, looks quite similar to what I see in the big beer companies. So if you like beer, if you like me and you like beer, and th that's the first drink you're gonna take, not vodka, not rakia, not, not, not anything else, it's beer, then you know that uh, the beers coming from these big companies is quite similar, right? It's light and it really it doesn't uh, allow for much flavor. So we're trying to see if we can find something that actually has flavor in digital transformation. And we realized that these big companies are mainly about marketing. So it reminds me of Coca-Cola, you know? The product is like this and marketing is like this. And the commercials give you like, if you drink this, you will have more chance of getting a girl, getting a degree, getting a whatever. But I don't know, if you drink beer coming from these big companies, you are definitely not going to get a degree. Maybe in some different fields, I don't know. And uh, it's lukewarm at best. So we were trying to find something that makes sense. So digital transformation makes all the sense, but only if you, if you implement it in the right way. And our way of doing that is to trying to find the other way, whatever the other way means. So we were trying to find the industries that made sense. And the beer industry that we were talking about actually makes a lot of sense because I don't know if you know, but the craft beer industry is alive for some 40, 50 years and it's blossoming. And we are going to show you that in these uh, uh, markets, that in these approaches like craft brewery, you will have niche markets that are all about the product and almost nothing about the marketing. And if you're, again, like me and some of uh, my friends who have untapped, who, and I, I tried only uh, 401 beer up to this moment. Uh, that's, not, that's not a lot, trust me. You have people on untapped that have tried 2,000 uh, different beers. So if you're like me and you like to have a choice and you like to have someone who will follow you and tell you, oh, do you like this kind of a taste or you, you prefer a darker one? I think that this approach is good for everything, for programming, for digital transformation, whatever you do. And let's, let's see how this craft beer industry actually came to be. So in the, uh, at the end of the 70s in the in United States, uh, all the breweries were quite the same. So Americans, uh, by the, the end of 70s, were driving mostly American cars and they were drinking mostly American beers. And American beers were light, crisp, and that's it. And in 1930s, you had 2,000 breweries in America. And by the end of the 1970s and the beginning of 1980s, you had 44. And there was a market consolidation. People said, well, it's going to be only four breweries in America. Isn't that the same like in consulting? Digital transformation, you had the big four writers of apocal apocalypse, right? And it's the same situation. So what happens when you have... Uh, only four companies producing something, well, disruption happens. You know this. This is, this is what we've seen all across the world. So what is the disruption? Well, disruption is called homebrew. People building their own beers at home because they wanted a different approach, a different taste. And as years went by, these people invested in their industries and they became bigger than just home brewers. They became little breweries and bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the mid 1990s, they became so big that uh, they had almost 35% of people employed in the beer industry in America. And what happened after 2000? Well, the internet happened and the, the social networks and everything else. So now we can share all this, the experience of drinking beer. We can download untapped and I can uh, send uh, the beer that I tried uh, five minutes ago to all of my friends that they can see that and say, ah, oh, yeah, I know he likes beer, so he, this beer is probably good. And let me tell you, like in everything else in the world at this moment, Asia is number one. Out of 10 biggest uh, breweries in the world, five are coming from China and Japan. In the next five years, it will be seven out of 10. So if you want to try uh, uh, corporate beer, you will drink Tsingtao, okay? But if you want want to try something really, really good, go to Cambodia because they have really good craft beers. Never went there, but I'm planning to. And 
we decided that, okay, we need to find uh, the, the, the people, the, these craft breweries to analyze the way that they're doing things so that we know how to approach a digital transformation. The good thing about it is that, well, we don't need to go far for the inspiration. There's this uh, word in Serbian language that we don't use anymore. Almost, we can, uh, see, uh, we can hear it sometimes, people saying, uh, on ima šlifa, on ima šlifa. Well, uh, if you are a jeweler, the point of your work is to have a diamond that sparkles. So th this is what we want. Our code needs to be clean, our tests ne uh, need to be written, and our Kanban needs to be clean, right? It needs to be fast, everything is perfect. So this is what we want. This is the same in the brewing situation. And we found a brewer who is actually a, a, a person you kind of know because you probably have used the products of his previous company uh, for the last 25 years. He started his company in the, in, at the beginning of the 90s and then he sold the company two years ago. And uh, he will join me here on the stage. We're going to talk about his craft experience. And I'm going to show you that this is the right path to do digital transformation. So our guest. I'm not going to tell you his name yet. Uh, uh, so, uh, why craft beer? I know you did pharmaceuticals before. So what is the connection between pharmaceuticals and craft beer? Well, uh, my passion for craft beer began some five years ago. And uh, first of all, I'm beer lover too, myself. Uh, at that time, I was in pharmaceutical uh, business, uh, producing, among others, probiotic products. and. Uh, Producing for probiotic products has some uh, similarities to, to the uh, beer brewing because the, the primary process is fermenting, fermentation of different kind of bacterial and yeast uh, strains uh, regarding the probiotics and then the beer, uh, uh, beer industry uh, um, fermenting beer yeasts uh, is the most important part of producing a beer. Uh, of course, I, I started in, in my kitchen, as everyone, as you explained. You were a home brewer, right? Yeah, yeah. I started as a home brewer in my kitchen, and of course, uh, my love and passion towards brewing has, was gradually developed. Me, um, hmm. the, uh, the 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 this process is of course quite uh, more difficult and more complicated. There are some other things that you need to learn besides uh, fermentation. Because, uh, you know, my, my expertise and experience in fermentation was enough to start, but uh, not enough to, to make it uh, better. And I would say to, to, uh, to my goal was, of course, to make a perfect beer, as everyone, everyone does. So I had, uh, I had uh, to attend some courses in Germany uh, at the beer brewing academies, which are quite uh, famous and quite old and that was a very nice experience and uh, of course um, some two years ago when I uh, left the pharmaceutical business I thought that it's the uh, right time right timing to, to start uh, my own brewery to change my career and to try to make another business yeah, so, uh, so what, is, what is actually craft beer for you? Because what we are talking about, we, we have big companies producing so much beer and craft beer is all about the product, it's all about the quality. So when I buy craft beer, I know it's good because uh, uh, it, uh, the quality of ingredients is uh, quite so high, not like uh, those substitutes that big companies use. So what is craft for you? Well, for, first of all, uh, I'm really enjoying uh, brewing craft beer. I would uh, even say that I'm in love with craft beer. But from business point of view, craft beer is uh, still quite small. It has a, a small market share. Okay, maybe in US it's uh, quite it's becoming much bigger, but uh, here in Europe it's still quite small. A huge part of the market is controlled uh, by the multinationals, as everywhere, of course, in, in all other businesses. And uh, in this situation, uh, to, to be seen by, by potential consumers and be remembered, uh, the only thing that you have 
uh, is to invest in quality and to try to make high quality beer, which would, of course, let, let people taste, remember, and probably come again. So, so the idea is definitely in the quality of service and the product. So w when we have a situation, I don't know if you had this uh, situation ever. Uh, so you, you uh, want to buy a product. You want to get a service, especially in digital transformation. And they give you a cookbook. It's really, really big. And you read it, there's some really good lines in it. But the product itself is poor in quality because you can see that it's a one size fits all. And craft beer is all about producing something that doesn't fit everybody's taste, right? So not all people will like craft beer that you produce, right? Well, uh, definitely not. Uh, of course, uh, you, you can have a different kind of craft beer. You can, oh, you can try to please your, your, your consumers with different kinds of beers. There are uh, light beers, there are uh, dark beers, there are uh, wheat beers, uh, the beers brew, uh, fermented with, with some, some fruits and things like that. So it's uh, really, re really big space, I would say, indefinite space for, for making different kind of, of beers with the different ingredients, uh, the, the different uh, uh, quantities of different ingredients. So the, the sky is the limit, I, I would say, for different kind of beers. But what is interesting about your brewery is that Guys, he has a, an app where he controls his brewery. So I've, I've seen that. So you built a pretty high-tech brewery. So you did digital transformation of making beer. And you can control everything via your app, no? can't you? Um, um, I, I, I wouldn't say it's, uh, you know, like that. In terms of trade, it's still a, a traditional brewery. But of course, uh, in order to... Well, let's say, to, to achieve high-quality uh, beer with high-quality ingredients, like you said, not cheap ones, uh, you, you, you need to have a very good quality control, also strict control of the process and impeccable uh, hygiene in order to have high-quality beer. Okay, the, the, these are, um, you know, this is <laughs> quite challenging, to be honest. And in order to, to, to overcome these challenges, I, I wanted to, to have a better control of my processes. And that's the reason why I invested a little bit of additional money to, to, to buy uh, programmable logical controllers, PLCs, which, uh, which are accessible from outside over the internet. So I, yes, I have an uh, uh, app for my mobile phone and I have a VPN. And through VPN, I'm connecting to, to my equipment. In that case, in, in, uh, this allows me to, to make uh, better control and, of course, to have an overview of the process if I'm not, even if I'm not there, uh, you know, during the night, you have to change the temperature of the fermentation, things like that. Okay, it's also programmable, but I always like to see it by, with my eyes, and that's why I'm using these apps. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, Bratislav Ivančić is coming from a company you, you know as uh, Ivančić and Sinovi, so you probably use their probiotic. If you haven't, I can recommend it because when I had stomach problems, that was one of the only probiotics that worked for me anyway. Uh, but what I, what I wanted to share with you is, uh, is our message of what kind of a thing that we learned from talking to Bratislav and uh, learning about digital transformation from within. Uh, first of all, we realized that we are not having uh, competitors. So these big companies are playing a different game. And if you've watched uh, Simon Sinek talk about uh, finite and infinite games, you've probably seen that it's a different game that some companies play. We don't play to win. We do a co-opetition game, which means, you know, if you're Larry Ellison from Oracle, he says, in order for me to succeed, everyone else must fail. So this is the game of the big companies. Oracle, Microsoft, IBM, Apple, Facebook. All of those big companies play the same game. They want to win, they want to kill the other opponents. But we don't play that game, we play a different game. And this game is a game where when one succeeds, everyone else succeeds. So when you have craft breweries, when a craft beer goes uh, in, in a, in a well-known pub, it's a success for all the craft breweries because 
then everybody else can join in. People have tried the one craft beer. It's the same with uh, our approach to consulting. Uh, we invested a lot of energy, a lot of resource, and a lot of time into building our own approach to digital transformation. We're not playing the same game with the four uh, riders of the apocalypse. We cannot play that game. So we are playing, we are playing a, a game without a clear winner. And this is my invite to you to come and meet us uh, in our venture. We are starting Belgrade beer sessions, and this is actually the first one. When we use beer, as beer has been used throughout time to talk about the important things, the, th the things that bug you and the challenges you have, we're going to meet. This is going to be an invite uh, kind of a thing. So like Gmail, remember Gmail when it started? So you get an invite from someone who already has Gmail account. So uh, if you wanna be a part of this journey, and that means talking about the issues you have and solving it with people that are coming from different industries, please find us. I will not give you my email because we live in a world where it's pretty easy to find anyone. So my name is Momir Djekic and uh, Alexander is not here. His name is Alexander Vratunic Glikurevic. AVG, like an antivirus, so you will find them easily. And let's make our world a better place one step at a time. So instead of sitting down and solving your problems all alone or just paying a lot of money to a consulting firm doing the business for you, let's talk about it. And I, I can guarantee that we're going to make a quality beer out of that. So thank you very much. Thank you.